Good morning, everybody. This is my brand new little baby Alhambra family box. Boom. Okay, so why am I showing to you guys this little peach of a game? Well, first of all, I just got it, and I just got it from London, England. Now, why did I get it from London, England, you might ask? Well, because you can't buy that version of the game in the United States without buying it at a very, very high price. Something like $111. I was able to get it in UK for around $40. It's about $8 shipping. And then a friend of mine brought it from the UK here to Saudi Arabia for me. So Alhambra Family Box has been for me what's called a grail game. And a grail game, as the title implies, is a game that's hard to find. You've wanted for a while and you have a special significance for the game. Now, all honesty, I've never played Alhambra. I've seen it played, I understand how it works, but I've never gotten it going on the table before. That being said, my wife and I's favorite game is Carcassonne. A tile laying game, classic. We play it on the phone, we play it in real life, we play it on our tablet, we play it all the time. And it's a tile laying game, just like Alhambra. So the difference between Alhambra is Alhambra, you're not putting, you're not creating a map together, you're making separate cities. Now, also if you notice, it's at the family box. And the family box has this beautiful, beautiful game board on it, which really connects all the pieces of the game together. And that's what I was really going after. The original Alhambra, just gives you these small cardboard pieces to put the cards on and it's really cheap in my opinion and it, it does what it needs to do but it doesn't create this feeling of the game it doesn't create the feeling so that is my grail game Alhambra it is 736 March 21st anyway so why did I go to all this expense to get this Grail game, which I've never played because it's very hard to find, not in print in America? Why did I do this? And this question was asked to me by my cousin-in-law, Gib Joy, Sawadikab, Gib Joy, about why do I game? Now, her English is not very good, but she could still express this idea of why do I have these games, why do I buy these games, why do I try and get people to play these games? And I have to back up for a second and talk kind of about the culture of being an adult. The culture of being an adult is mostly around talking, and that usually involves bragging, and that also involves making people maybe feel bad about their life, making people feel less important. Now, this isn't done on purpose most of the time, but usually when someone says, I got a promotion, that's going to make someone inadvertently maybe feel negative about their life. But it also may inspire them. So, that being said, that's what I've noticed when I gather with my adult friends, so to speak. It's just kind of reliving what they've done, what they've said, yada, yada, yada. And there's not a lot of treasure in that trash well on the other hand when you play a game when you sit down with some friends all of that external ego stuff evaporates now it can seep through into the game definitely and life decisions can mirror in-game decisions <clears throat> but at the same time when you put your little starting markers on the board at the start and you give everybody the same amount of money, the same amount of this, and then you talk about the rules, and now you say, okay, we all know what the rules of the game are, we have our starting resources, etc., and now we play a game. From that time on, to the time the winner is decided or screamed at or the table is flipped, there's sort of a calm. And this is usually called the magic circle. And I'm just gonna put that out there. 
And within this magic circle or this calm, the ego of who you are, who you were in your real life just fades away. It doesn't matter anymore. We are sitting playing a game. It's just you. It's not where you went to school. It's not your accolades. It's not your expense account. It's not the car you drive. It's just you rolling some dice, moving some cardboard, wooden piece around the board, making decisions. And when it's over, it's over. There's no large scale ramifications, unless maybe you're playing a legacy game or something. Um, there's no divorce that can entail, no bankruptcy. If you fail in a game, you fail in a game. Maybe you can actually learn something from that, about that, for yourself. That being said, that was very hard to explain to a person that doesn't speak English very well. So, I had to simple it down for her. And only in words, not in context. And I said, when I was around four, I played a game with my family. And we had a lot of fun. And I like that kind of fun. So, I want to play those games more and have that fun with my family. She understood that, she got that, and that's still true. And this brings us back to Alhambra Family Box. Now, my family as a whole rarely sees each other. Now my family is small groups, maybe once a year. That's pretty good. And again, when you get together with people you haven't seen in over a year, there tends to be a lot of posturing, a lot of let's do this, I want to do that kind of thing. And very rarely does everyone get to do a single thing together. Does everybody get to sit around, throw some cards, and just not worry about what they have or haven't done or what they need to do or maybe how they look or feel in front of their brothers or sisters or parents or whatever. And they can just be them. It's very freeing. And soon, in a few months, I am going to be seeing my parents again and my brother and his family again. And last time we got together, we played the game Splendor. And holy moly, was that popular. Every single night, I played Splendor with my parents. Every single night. It was so amazing, charming, reassuring. After dinner, everyone would kind of look at each other, and someone would just say, so, Splendor? And of course, everyone said yes. We wanted to deal out those cards, take those poker chips. And we would usually play two or sometimes three games in one night. And it was just fun. Those times are the most memorable of my stay. Yes, the food was good. Yes, seeing friends was good. But something about a game and those in-game decisions creates memories. And this is something that is very hard to do. This is when you get together with people, you say this kind of same kind of things, and you leave with not really remembering a lot. But those moments playing Splendor with my parents, I will always remember. I will always remember the look on my dad's face when he won. I will look at, I remember the look on my mom's face when she was just one card away from winning. That is just the reason I play games. That being said, when I was home, when I was back in Thailand, my home in Thailand, and we played Fief, and when my friend Luke tried to assassinate the king, which is one of my nobles, and he lost, just the crumpling is like, oh, when the dice didn't come up in his favor. I mean, it wasn't that I won, that didn't matter, but just the reactions, the, the Rob throwing the token to let's negotiate. I mean, those things I will always remember about that trip. And that's what gaming is for me. It's about creating memories with friends, forgetting about obligations, social interactions, and just having fun. And that's why 
I don't mind tracking down the game that's in German, sold in England, and then I can go play in Hawaii. I hope you guys all have a great day and create some great memories.